What is good, everybody? This is Charles from Team COG. Coming to you guys here with my top 16th place regional Inferno Knight deck profile. So if you guys don't know, I took this to a regional this past week and ended up getting 15th place out of the top 16. And I ended, my overall record was 5-2. and two. And I'll go ahead and I'll put a list up here uh, to show you guys what matches was. I believe round 1, I have it written down. Uh, this will definitely tell you. Round 1 was Menadium. Round 2 was Unchained. Round 3 was Chimera Branded. Round 4 was Eldritch. Round 5 was Kashtira. Round six was Pearly, and then round seven was Branded Chimera, and my only losses was to the Branded Chimera decks. Uh, however, there was some pretty cool insight that did pop up uh, through it, especially like seeing Super Poly in the hand with the with the Dolphin, right? You see Super Poly, and you're just kind of like, whoa, okay, that ain't good. Uh, that allows you to like play certain cards, and I was like, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy what this deck was able to do, but please remember if you guys enjoy this content. If you guys enjoy this stuff, check out the links down in the description below. If you guys enjoy the mat, check the store, all that type of stuff. Think about becoming a joint member, hit that join button. All that fine stuff. But anyway, I'll quickly showcase you guys my main extra inside. Uh, nothing's really changed too much with the main, but I'll talk over like where certain things like really shine and stuff like that. But no nothing truly has really changed. Even kind of a little bit of a uh, a little change in the sense of like maybe one or two cards have been like kind of like changed a little bit. But also huge shout out to Team Samurai X1. These sleeves are from him, and these sleeves were phenomenal, man. Like I ran these were like a seven round tournament, and like there's no gunk, no nothing. These are probably hands down, I have to say, some of the best sleeves on the market. So go check him out at his, you know. If you don't know who TCM is, you're living under a rock. But anyway, let's just go ahead and jump into the profile here. Uh, I was on, of course, like, I still played three Ogier, uh, three Renaud, two Oliver, one Turpin, run Ricardetto, one Malgus, and then I played one Infernoble Knight Roland. Uh, and so this is pretty standard to me. I, I keep saying, guys, I keep saying that people are playing two of this, two of this. Don't do that. Do not do that. You want to have the ability to always open this right here. Like, any sort of conjunction with Infernoble Ogier and Renaud is like anti Nibiru, anti hand trap play it you want to maximize consistency uh, same with oliver i can see a world where you want to play three of it because oliver is really like it really shines really much when like our connector gets hit uh, so definitely see a world where you can play three but two is good one is too little i, I truly believe one is too little uh turpin is pretty you know self-explained for the combo ricardetto is really good ricardetto's banish effect actually comes up quite a lot like if you hard open ricardetto you're able to grab him and then like you're able to just like um uses effect to banish from hand to special from the hand, which is really good. It becomes a tuner. That's pretty powerful. Uh, and I actually played Malgus. If you guys don't know, I've been on the Malgus train. Malgus, guys, Malgus is insane. Shuffle three, draw one. And you do that, you can do that like over the course of like multiple turns. So like you're always getting an inherent plus one kind of, uh, it's really nice. And Roland was in here instead of red layer. So I finally cut red layer because off of my Azold, I was constantly adding the red layer. And I was just, it just seemed like wasted movement. So instead of like wasting that movement to end up adding just a red layer that's not going to do nothing. I'm adding red layer so I don't draw it. Instead, I decide to add Roland, and I do not regret it because there was at least once that um, my my extra deck Roland actually got DD Crowed. Like, who plays DD Crow? Uh, so I was able to have this in hand, and then I was able to fire it down and still get Charles's pop because Charles is literally the the beast, man. Charles Charles is the beast of this deck. So uh, that's it for the Infernoble Knights right here. Uh, not much more can be said. Uh, moving on, we were playing just generic fires, you know, so there's one Flint Lady, double Gear Freed. I really recommend playing two. I think three is too many because, like, yeah, you want to prioritize opening it, but, like, I actually, my, my last round, round seven, I lost because I opened two Gear Freed. I, I really, I, my opening hand was Renaud, double Gear Freed, DDR, and I believe it was a side deck card, Lightning Storm. Three's, like, you know, if you see two, it's kind of rough, but this card is literally, like, insane, too. It just allows you to break boards. It gives this deck, like, if people say this deck can't go second, which I disagree, I believe every, like, card in the engine is very good at going second, a uh, Gear Free is, like, no slouch there either. I think Gear Free is what gives this deck a very good going second option. It allows us just to play through stuff pretty easy. Uh, something, like, I really like doing is uh, when I use Dolphin and peek at a hand, and I would see, like, tons of spells and tons of traps, I'll normally even, I'll even, like, synchro off Gear Free to make a Baron. So then, like, Baron's better in that sort of situation. So then, do you, when it comes back to my turn, do you, the standby phase Baron can tag out into the Gear Freed again? Uh, just to keep that, like, big body on field. But Flint Lady's really good. Flint Lady just allows you to, like, combo. Like, especially if you open, like, Ricardetto and stuff like that. It just allows you to get it out of your hand. Uh, it's a very powerful extender, especially if your connector gets hit. Uh, not really much more can be said. I don't, I've never wanted to see two of it, so, like, one was just perfect. Uh, we'll go here to the connector and dolphin package. Guys, if you guys are not playing this, I, I don't understand it. There is no world where the, the, the Battling Boxer engine is better than this. There is no world where, like, Sublimation is better than this. This card literally won games. Like, it's it's truly probably the first best normal summon in the deck, and then Ogier is the second. Like, that's how good this card is. I was actually able to, in my round seven, uh, to turn game two, I was able to loop uh, for two cards. 
because I ended up looking in the hand, using Dolphin, ripped one, then I DDR'd back the Dolphin, ripped another, and then was able to climb into over 10 using the Dolphin and the Azold that was left. You guys got to, man. You guys got to play this. Like, I I truly, I think we'll see moving forward with all the regionalists and stuff like that, if those other engines are good, but I can tell you that if I was playing the, what is it, the Battle Boxer engine, I was going to lose to Ash, I was going to lose to Drolls, I was going to lose to a lot. And uh, thank goodness Connector exists because Connector allows you to say no to those. And if, you're, if your Connector gets hit, guys, like that's its job. That is 100% its job is to get a hand trap. No matter what, they're megging one to stop Connector. Then you plow through with something like Flint Lady and or Oliver. And before you guys even decide to comment down below and say, well, those are only three. Technically, you play like nine to ten copies of them. You play three Heritage of Chalice, three Durandal, three Museums. Like you play enough to get to him to push through if the Dolphin gets, or the Connector gets hit. Uh, for the final monster in the deck, we are on to just triple Drone Lockbird. Uh, this card was... Literally, um, my round one against Mana DM, I won the dice roll, and I could have just passed turn. <laughs> I could have just not even set up a board. I could have just passed turn and drolled him, and then added, like, that's just how powerful Droll is. Uh, Droll is just a phenomenal card. It was really good all day. Uh, I really didn't say, it was the only, like, side deck card I kept that, or, like, main deck, like, I have, like, nine flex spots that state. This card stayed in, I think, through all my matches, personally. I, actually, I take that back. It came out against uh, Unchained, because it was not good against Unchained. In my opinion, it was not good, because they just set stuff and play through stuff, but... Unchained is a crazy deck, so it is what it is. Uh, moving on to the spells, of course, rocking triple museums. A museum is the probably the strongest. Like, if you know they have droll and you need to resolve a search first, you always want to use museum's effect to search because museum just does so much. Because it searches you the equip spell right, and then if they droll you there, the equip spells all have pretty good effects when they get sent to the graveyard. And then it also has the ability, since you use the first effect, you get to use the second effect to summon from the spell and trap card zone. So I definitely recommend prioritizing on museum. Uh, triple Heritage of Chalice. Uh, just remember, guys, that this card can also grab Noble Arms Museum if need be. Moving on to the equip spells, we're on to Triple DDR, one Almus. Huge shout out to uh, Cord, a man that I met, a fan I met from uh, Salt Lake City. He was able to hook me up with a Collector's Rare Almus. Uh, not Collector's Rare, a uh, Quarter Century Rare. But now, since he's did that, that means I gotta go search after the, the field spells now. And then one DDR. Oh, excuse me, we'll put Joyous here. There we go, this is better. So three, D three Durandal, one Almus, one Joyous, one DDR, one Phoenix Blade. I did not play Metal Silver because I was testing out DDR, and DDR actually came through a lot, like really, really good. It was so powerful to extend through plays. It was so good to like push through stuff. It was phenomenal. Even hard opening DDR is a little bit better than Metal Silver. However, I can tell you that it was tons of matchup, like Unchained Mana DM, and uh, even Eldritch I played. If I had Metal Silver armor, there was nothing that those decks could have done. So that gave them breathing room, whereas I believe Metal Silver would not have given them the breathing room to be able to combo or play, right? But DDR performed phenomenal, in my opinion. So like, I, I'm still gonna keep playing it over over Metal Silver. Uh, but once, once we do end up getting Angel Ring, I definitely believe like Angel Ring will either bump up the equip count or it'll come in as a, uh, an additional equip spell. We were actually talking about that at the regional, like when that card does come out, like what's the plan? Do we cut like, do you cut Durandal from three to two or you just add an extra equipped? I don't truly know. Uh, we'll just find out because DDR is like insane, but triple tactics talent, one call by and one Rota. Uh, these cards right here did their purpose. Tactics was actually quite insane. You know how many times I like, I think twice I eat a, I eat a droll and then I just literally look at the hand and just rip one card and then just stuff like that. Uh, call by was just there to answer dimensional shifter. I went into the event scared of pearly and scared of shifter and I left the event still scared of shifter, still scared of pearly and now scared of chimera fusion. So uh, that that's was um, what shifter was for. To hopefully I could see the one shifter when they see their uh, or see the one call by when I see their shifter pretty much. But uh, for the last card guys or last we play three imperms. This card came out every now and then. It's just a good card to like open up with. You can rip it off the top, it's live, etc. Uh, my only complaint is that, which it didn't happen, but my complaint's still the same, that if you end up um, using Malgus here and you draw it, it's kind of bad. So sometimes like playing something like maybe like Effect Valor or that Moonlight Chill card might come up. But anyway, yep, that is it. It was 42 cards. Like I said, not really much has changed except for the cut, the cutting of uh, Red Layer for Roland. But we'll go on into the extra deck, which I believe has changed, I think, the most. Uh, we are still on to two Emperor Charles. Two is old, two of the normal Charles, one Angelica, one Roland, and one Lancelin. So fun fact against my cashier matchup, I ended up firing off Droll, he chained Unicorn, and he ended up picking out Angelica. He didn't even go after the, the, any of these because of, um, what's the point, right? So he picked out Angelica, and that was fine. I was still able to combo through uh, with, uh, without having Angelica. It was a little bit harder because Museum's a heck of a card, but uh, it's not the end of the world. You don't play uh, two, two, 
of the Lynx because of Kester. You play two of Lynx and two, two, his, two Charles and two his old Lynx uh, simply because they're that good. You can end on double Charles sometimes, and sometimes like you're, is, you need two is old for when they like in perm the first is old, like on the add effect, so you can just make a second is old. So definitely um, for that reason. But two Charles, maybe when Kester finally falls out, we can cut down to just the one. There was only one instance in the entire game where I missed a second Angelica, but I was able to, like, I set, I literally just brain power, brain power, and I realized that there was the, the line that I was looking for for Angelica, Lancelin was able to do the same thing. So I just ended up making Lancelin and solve the issue, so. But that is it for, like, the Infernobles there. Nothing really. Uh, Lancelin's still pretty cool. Uh, being able to play underneath, um, being able to play underneath Droll is really awesome. This card just allows the gear free combo to, like, be so free. Angelica is, like, MVP. People, like, would forget that she could just run and hide. So I do, I just conveniently enough, there was my uh, Eldritch matchup. He, I looked at his hand, he had Super Poly and Imperm. So he wasted Imperm on this effect uh, to be able to tag out, which was smart, but I just had enough gas to build into like an Azul, and then I was able to do some pretty cool stuff uh, that way. One Baron to Floor. Now, if, now for like the MVP, I think, of the, uh, like the, the three MVPs, I think, would be the Ferocious Flame Swordsman, came up with tons, Red 10, and Power Load Ogre. Now, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, uh, my first loss was to Branded or Chimera, right? And I lost because I'm a Power Load Ogre. So I was scared of Super Poly coming in, so I decided to make Power Load Ogre so at least have a monster stay. Whereas, since he didn't see it, he was able to go Battle Phase and like whack over, like attack Gear Freed, reduce its attack to zero, then attack it three more times. Whereas, if I had Retin out, I could just pop the Chimera. Uh, Flame Swordsman came up quite a bit by taking a Nib Token and being able to take it and move, put it into something. Uh, the Eldritch player also gave me a Wallaby or whatever it is, like a Shark Wallaby. So being able to turn the Wallaby Ferocious Flame into that uh, was pretty good because I was able to climb up into Goki. Now this card is insane. This card is literally a power uh, towers. It's a powerhouse too. Uh, this card is unaffected. It becomes 3,000 when you have it out with Charles. Uh, this was my way that I beat Super Poly. I saw Super Poly in the hand twice today, or, or at the event, not today, but... And the way you do it is you look at, you make Power Load Ogre, then you just make Charles. They can't Super Poly you because Power Load's unaffected. It was nice. And the ability that this card has to outskill Drain against Eldritch, I was able to make this and then use its effect to tribute itself to destroy everything. And then after that, it was just free real estate. It's free real estate. So Goki Power Load, I believe, deserves a spot in the deck. I, I know some people don't like it. I know it's like kind of like, maybe people be like, it's a win more card, but I'm telling you by just being able to link up into a Towers-esque monster, it does something. It, it really does. Uh, like I said, Rattan's pretty good. Ferocious Flame Swordsman was also pretty, 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 pretty good. Uh, there was at least one time today where I made the Ferocious Flame Swordsman uh, simply because I knew what was in the hand and I was going to get whacked. So I wanted to be able to, when this got destroyed, to reborn back something. So it happened. He was able to destroy it and it like brought back, he brought back Ricardetto. Ricardetto brought back Ogier. Ogier was able to dump another extender. So it was pretty. Uh, for the final two cards, we're on to Battle Boxer Dempsey and Artorgus, King of the Noble Knights. So some of you are going to be like, yo, Charles, why are you playing two of the same, like two cards that do the same? Let me tell you something. They do the same thing, but they do it very differently. So in the in the sense of what they do is they do make the one card combo, two warrior combo, their thing, but both just do tremendously the same, but yet different lines per se. Artorgus actually outperformed Dempsey today insanely, simply because going second, you make Dem Artorgus and I was able to pop a bunch of back row and still combo through stuff. Uh, also, Artorgus is able to pick up the spells from the graveyard, which sometimes can like come up to use their graveyard effects a lot easier, if that makes sense. Uh, there was only a few times a day that Dempsey came up, and most of the times it was when like I had to normal summon Dolphin because I hard open it and use Durandal early. That's when Dempsey truly shined, because Dempsey allowed me to grab uh, Renaud and still combo forward. But most most of the time today, today guys, or at the event, not today, still living in the past. Sorry guys. Uh, for most of the tournament event, Artorgus was the line that I went for, and Artorgus performed just perfectly fine. It actually performed better because I was able to hold Renaud in my hand later on to be able to use it to end up making a Baron out of a Charles and grab back a Gear Freed and stuff like that. So, but I do believe both are necessary. I truly do. I truly do believe that both are necessary simply just because Dempsey just allows us to play through having being forced to use a Durandal early, but that is it for the, oh, of course we have the, the Nib token, but that is it for the extra deck, 15 cards. Not really much more can say be said here. Uh, we'll go on into my side deck. My side deck was probably the weakest. I really did not like my side deck at the end of the day. Uh, my siding patterns and stuff like that is different from everybody else's and I'm like my buddies, their siding pattern, they talked me into like kind of like moving towards their siding patterns and I kind of didn't like it, but the side deck did perform um, very phenomenal. So two lightning storms, which you can only play two of these, which is, you know, it is what it is. Two lightning storms, two evenlies, and then two cosmics. So I'm not a big fan of two ofs. 
I have essentially nine spots in my uh, main deck I can side out, right? So I just didn't like not having like to be able to put in like nine new cards with like three ofs, right? But uh, Cosmic came up against Unchained. Evenly was an amazing card. Actually, Evenly was pretty bonkers. It just finally, it just eventually, you know, like they keep the one card. And sometimes like you just side out, you, you side like all these in or something like that. Like it's, it was all right. The card that was really the MVP of the day was actually Gamma Seal. Uh, Gamma Seal was insane against Mana Diem, was insane against the Unchained, was insane against uh, Hurley matchup. Gamma, Gamma Seal, pff, game's in the name, why wouldn't you play it? Just being able to Kaiju stuff, like, I, my Mana Diem player got it, I disrupted him with an Imperm, so he was able to not fully extend into his board, but he ended on Baron plus Reframing, and I just gave him a Kaiju, and it, you know, two for one right there, so that was, that was pretty nice. And then just being able to Kaiju the Noir and stuff like that, uh, Arias Heart was an issue, but, like, that... Cashier was just so rough that even like they even though they had a rise heart, I kaijued it and they just still had just enough. Like the fin rears and stuff like that was still kind of it was still just it was still good enough. The hand traps and everything. Uh, triple book of moon, triple book. Now let me tell y'all how I won my pearly matchup. So like I said, I came into the event super scared of pearly because I've not got a chance, got not have the chance to play against it. I know Noir is a towers. I know it's really hard to beat it. I know they can make Zeus crazy. So I ended up just putting in book of moon. And I, there we go, I was like, draw phase, and I opened two books, drew into something good, and he had the, the baby Noir, and the trap that lets him rank up, right? And I was like, question, I was like, when do you, and I was like, when do you actually get to draw? And he's like, I draw during your standby phase. I was like, okay. So I was like, still in draw phase, I was like, Book of Moon. He then chained the trap, and then I chained Book of Moon again. <laughs> so like, I'm just better at the game, I guess. I, I saw two Book of Moons, it flipped everything down, I was able to go full combo. Our triple judgment. I was scared, man, I was scared of getting blown out by Dark Rulers, I was scared of just like, Problematic cards and Judgment was just kind of like, Judgment always went in just to beat Dark Ruler, but it's like, Judgment also was like the last line of defense that it was like there for a lot of games. Uh, they didn't see Dark Ruler, I didn't get Dark Ruler once, but one of the games I saw Judgment, the hands they had were very powerful that if I didn't see Judgment, it's untalented if they would have been able to push through what they were doing. But just having that set security in the back run, in the back line to just be able to like hit something was pretty nice. But Well guys, that is it for my deck profile. Like I said, I ended up going 5-2, and two. the deck performed phenomenally like the deck just ugh. beautiful man beautiful uh the really no complaints nothing i really want to change uh, like i said maybe in my side deck i'd actually want to change something i do not like how the two ofs like i don't like two ofs but other than that everything like performed beautifully guys like everything everything like i said like maybe there's a world where you can like play like different imperms and stuff but or not play different imperms, play like something instead of imperms. I do apologize if this is kind of like off the wall. I'm kind of, I'm still tired recovering for the, it was like an eight hour drive. So I'm still recovering from that. But otherwise guys, the deck is phenomenal. I, I truly, in, Droll and Lockbird should be called Infernoble Knight Droll and Lockbird, but the amount of times I saw it, Roland, Mal, Roland and Malgus just allow you so much grind uh, by the ability to add stuff back and draw a card and stuff like that. It's just truly, truly insane. And then Ogier and Oliver just being able to protect your stuff, make your stuff like untargetable and undestructible it's just like really good but anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching i'll quit this rambling please remember to like comment subscribe and most importantly stay safe and stay healthy this is charles from team cog signing out